I sure will. A good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Well, nothing changes about that. Nothing changes about that. Man, I was just uh, getting ready to come on the air this morning. And I was just thinking, man, I was just having a reflective moment of just how really good God has been to me. I, I just, it's, 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 man, let me just say that again. How really good God has been to me. And here's the cold part. In spite of myself, you understand, in spite of all my shortcomings, in, in spite of all of my flaws, in, 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 in spite of all of what anybody has said about me, <laughs> God, through his grace and mercy, just keeps me anyway. So many of us are exceptional people, but we refuse to just go ahead and be exceptional. We we settle for the ordinary. We follow the pack. We try to fit in. Man, oh man, oh man. You know, I've heard my wife say this to, to my children all the time when she's scolding them or talking to them. She'll be talking to them about leadership. You know, why are you following everybody when God clearly made you to lead? So many of us are born and so many of you are born to be exceptional people, but we always trying to follow the pack. Why would you try to fit in? Why would you try to be uh, like everybody else? Be ordinary. Why would you follow the pack when God has created you to be exceptional? The, the key word in exceptional is accept. You ever, you ever done this right here? You, you know, everybody did that except me. Everybody felt that way except me. Everybody said that except me. Everybody want, wanted that except me. Everybody went over there except me. Everybody jumped in except me. Except me. See, why have you said that in your life if you were not to be exceptional? See, you got to say everybody except me. At one point in your time, I don't know who ain't done it. You know, everybody wanted, everybody voted no except me. See, so you, you you're not you're not created to follow the pack. You ain't created to fit in. You ain't created to uh, you know, to be ordinary. You were created to be exceptional, as exceptional as your fingerprint on your finger is you were created to be exceptional why not make this the year that you go ahead on and be exceptional why won't this be the year that you decide in your mind but just has to be a decision that we make now we're not following the pack no more we're not trying to fit in no more we ain't settling for ordinary no more we're gonna be exceptional but you know, you got you got to go ahead and follow that. You got to get on the exceptional path because that's what you were created for. Why be ordinary? You know, but all of this, this comes, it has to start with a thought. You got to first think something. Thoughts become things. A man is as he thinketh. That's all you will ever be. So what are your thoughts today? Why not have exceptional thoughts instead of ordinary thoughts? Why not have exceptional thoughts instead of fitting in thoughts? So why you want to be like everybody else? Why you want to be ordinary when you could possibly be extraordinary with a change of your mind, a change of your venue? And you don't have to be any other kind of way just because my mama was this way or my daddy was this way or this the school I went to, this what race I belong to, this my sexual preference, this my this, this my that. Well, well how many, how many, how many excuses you need? How many, how many excuses? What, 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 what you, what's it going to be this year that we let another 365 days slip by without improving our condition, our place, our spot? Our life, the quality of life we have, we cannot afford to keep letting all these years go by without changing. You're an exceptional person. How many times have you set up and said, everybody did that except me? 
You know, I was the only, everybody jumped in except me. I told him, I knew it. Everybody voted for that except me. And now look at us. Man, it seemed like everybody went that way except me. Okay? Do you get it? Do, do, do you understand what's being said to you? That old except me is because couldn't it be because you're an exceptional person? And it's time for you to take control of that? It's time for you to start thinking different. It's time for you to start acting on what you think. It's time for you to start doing something about it. It's time for you to stop taking each and every day that God gives us for granted and letting them go by the wayside like you got plenty more. Well, you may have plenty more, but guess what? What you wasting the ones you got for? I got you young and you and you feel like you're going to live forever. Eh, okay, cool. But let me ask you something. See, here, 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 here go the part about suppose you do live. See, see, everybody worried about dying, but I got news for you. Suppose you keep on living. You want to keep living in the condition you in now? You want to keep living with the money you got now? You want to keep living with the relationship you got now? You want to keep living by yourself like you are now? You want to keep wanting the right relationship, the right man, the right woman, but you keep getting the wrong one? You want to keep doing that? For the rest of your life, problem ain't dying. This problem is if you keep on living. Who wants to keep on living just the way they are right now? And if you can say, I'm cool with I am just the way I am right now, then cool. This conversation ain't for you. I ain't got no problem with that. You know, you know what I'm saying? Greatness ain't for everybody. Being exceptional ain't for everybody. Becoming extraordinary ain't for everybody. Heck, becoming successful ain't for everybody. I got it. And you can come up with a way to justify your non-existence and your ordinary life all you want. And that's fine and dandy. I ain't got no problem with it because some people just going to be regular. Some people just going to follow the pack, follow the crowd. Some people just wants to fit in. But if you're not that person, if you want to be extraordinary, if you want to be exceptional, if you want to be, if you want to dare to be great at something, then you got to change your mindset. You got to get with your creator and find out what he created you for. You got to quit thinking of things just in your own thought process. You know, lean not to your own understanding. I don't know where that is, but it's in there somewhere. See, and once you lean, if if, if you lean to your own understanding, you know what it's going to do? It's going to limit you, man. It's going to limit you. Why not see what God got for you? I would rather know what God got for me than to think of all the things I could because I can't outthink him. I done tried it before. All right, it's just the beginning. We're going to have a good one, man. Let's go. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In the world of murderous cults, if Charles Manson is king, Cecilia Stein is queen. She conditioned them to be monsters. We are all so horrified by the idea that a mother would sully her daughter in this way. Why stab someone 65 times in the chest? Queen Havoc and Her Murder Cult is a new podcast that investigates the four-year killing spree carried out by a religious cult in South Africa. She was telling people the Bible says she must go and kill, but actually she was taking revenge. She actually copied American serial killers. A little bit of Charles Manson, you can see a bit of Sons of Sam. Cecilia's cult, called Electus Perdeus, killed 11 people over four years. Every time you think you understand what's happening, you realize that you're wrong. They let her go. That is what happened. Listen to Queen Havoc from the executive producers of Hell and Gone on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, let me have your undivided attention. He done done it again, and we are here for it. If you don't think that's a blessing, it's something wrong with you. That's all I'm going to say this morning. Let's just get it started. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica, Jr. Government name is Kill Spate and the legend of Nephew Tommy. Jr., it's yeah. so much going on in your life. It's so <laughs> yeah, uh, many wonderful twists and turns. It's just fascinating watching a young man go through the changes of marriage and hope and dreams and home ownership and newlyweds. It's just you got yeah. so much. You're a brand new father. You just you just got it all happened this year. It's a lot. But you know, you gotta find other things that can take your mind off of some of this stuff. You do, you really do. Can you notice, have y'all looked around and noticed 
that you see uh, white people on the flies for Juneteenth. Have y'all seen this? No. We not saw not. that somewhere. Where they yeah. Have a I looked up somewhere. there and I said, mm, I don't really quite remember y'all being there. Who was y'all oh, celebrating? Oh, 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 they was there. They were there. I'm just yeah. saying, I don't really know. <laughs> You know, we were celebrating. I'm from Texas. I mean, can't we just at least have the Juneteenth fly? Can we have that? Because <laughs> I don't ever remember us being so on the what are they on there for, Junior? What, what oh, they the have a celebration. Say? They have a celebration, and they just own the flies in these cities. They celebrate the Juneteenth. But I would think you would put, you know, somebody like, you know, Dr. King on the fly or something like that. You know, somebody that looks like what Juneteenth represents, what we're doing. You know, just some black families or something like that. But they're not doing that. They just on the fly. I just don't remember us being on the 4th of July fly. I ain't never seen us on the front of that one. I ain't never looked up and said, uh, that's, uh, that's awesome. There we go. I ain't never seen. Can you imagine if the Steve Harvey Morning Show was representing the St. Patrick's Day? You know the hell it would be out there? You see, do you do you understand what would happen if we just owned the St. Patty's Day? Okay, mm. I don't never see us on President's Day flies. We damn sure ain't getting any of the Labor Day flies. I just want to know, can we just have the Juneteenth fly? And look how happy they is on the fly. They look like they really about to go celebrate. I, I don't even know if they even realize what Juneteenth means. I don't think yeah, they I know. see the fly now. I yeah, fly. yeah. Um, mm. Look how happy they is. Got nice shirts on. All right. Just posing. <laughs> Just standing up there like we have a Where damn thing to do with Juneteenth. Where is the picture of the white folks that knew we were <laughs> free and <laughs> didn't tell us? Where they yeah. picture at? The, Where they the ones at? that were there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where they at? I just thought that's very odd. I said, I can't believe this. We just uh, we just can't even have Juneteenth fly. Can you imagine if we was on Memorial Day? Ha! Memorial Day? Boy? Oh, no. oh no. that cannot happen. Oh, and that flyer no. was from Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting around here like, South Carolina, though. What in the world? Just let us have a flyer back. That's all. Just let us have a flyer. We ain't asking for much. Now, Just the flyer. Yeah. I, I don't remember making pasta on, on, on Juneteenth. I ain't never seen it. I ain't never ate pasta. I've never done that. Good looking out, Junior. Thank I'm just you. seeing that. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. Ain't no souffles on Juneteenth. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to run that prank back with the nephew. Nephew, what you got for us today? My bones is weak. My bones is weak. Either way. Anyway, my bones are weak. Let's go get it off. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to uh I'm trying to speak to Ron. Yeah, this is Ron. Hey Ron, how you doing? It's Foley, man. How are you, brother? I'm good, Foley. Hey, hey, I, I, I wanna congratulate you, man, on the uh on the baby, man. I wasn't able to make it to the baby shower, man, but I want to congratulate you on the baby, man, and, and, and all of that, man. Uh, much success to you, man, uh, you, you and the wife. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Foley. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank Foley, you. man. Uh, I, I didn't get, you know, my uh, my wife, Danita, she came to the uh, to the, to the baby shower, man. So, you know, uh, uh, she was telling me how, 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 how nice it was, how successful it was, man. So I just, you want, you know, I uh, wanted to give you big ups. I heard the baby came and everything, and I wanted to just yeah, call. Yeah, a little girl. A little girl. Y'all had a little girl? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, congratulations, man. Congratulations, Ron. I, I wanted to, to definitely uh, call and congratulate, man. And um, Holy, real quick, what um, what baby shower was your wife at? Because we had two. We had one for my side of the family and then one for my wife's side because, you know, they live different places and stuff, man. So which one do you think she was at? Uh, probably on your wife's side, you know. Okay, okay. She knows my wife? Well, no, see, see, Danita is actually friends with um, with Kendra. Now, you know Kendra, right? Oh, yeah, I know Kendra. Yeah, we, yeah, that's a good friend of Okay, she yeah. was she was with Kendra. Okay, yeah, she come, they play cards, you know. Okay, okay, yeah, she she was with Kendra, man, and um, she was just telling me how successful, man, how nice it was, and, and you know, laid out, baby shower. I, I wasn't able to make it, man. I've been a little under the weather, bro. Uh, you know, right. and, uh, you know, with, with God's help, man, I'll be able to get back on my feet. You know what I'm saying? That's all right. So, hey, man, I, I, I just, you know, congratulations again, man. You know, uh, the beautiful baby girl. I, I, man, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, man, but uh, I just, I can't totally. I'm trying to remember you and trying to place you, and I just, I can't do it. <laughs> Have we met? 
Uh, no, 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 no. My bad, man. I'm sorry, dog. Now, nah, me and you, we haven't, we haven't met at all. Uh, like I say, uh, you know, my wife knows Kendra. And they hang out, and uh, yeah. I guess she's she's dabbled a couple times and been around. You know, your wife is uh, your wife is Marilyn, right? Yeah, that's my wife. Okay, yeah, I guess she's been uh, been in, in the presence of Marilyn, man. So you know, uh, you know, I, I kind of got your number from uh, from my wife, man, uh, and she got it from Kendra. So I, I kind of wanted to holler at you, you know. Uh, what you want to holler me about? Actually, man, like I say, man, I've been I've been down for a minute, you know, and uh, I, I uh, actually, you know, came from the doctor yesterday, and and my my bones, man, they my bones are deteriorating, you know. Uh, that's that's kind of what I what I've been going through, man. Um, okay. And if if I don't uh, get the proper uh, medication that I need, man, then we. You know, it, it, it within the next three months here, dog, it it, wow. it, it it could get pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? Well, man, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. Um, yeah, it, it, you it, know, it, all I can do is just pray well, for you, man, and you know. Uh, well, man, I the, the the doctor told me don't, that if don't I don't cry, bro, don't cry, man. The the, the doctor told me, man, that. You know, if, if I get the right medication, man, that, you know, I could get back up to 75, 80% healthy again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's just a, a rare uh, type of thing that I need to try and get. Okay. And um, I, 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 I think that you might be. I think you can help me. Yeah, you know, be man. strong, man. Be strong. Just, man, sit down, man. Just be strong, <laughs> bro. It's, it's going to be all right, but man. I think it's going to be all right. God is with you. I'll, I'll pray for you. I'll do all I can. I, I don't know. Well, well, well actually, actually, uh, the, the doctor told me, man, that if, for, if I, for six months, if I drunk breast milk, it will, it will, it will put enough calcium and, and stuff back into my bones that would get me back up to seventy to eighty-five percent healthy. Breast milk? Yeah. I ain't got no breast, bro. So I, you know, well, I, it's, it's not, it's, it's not you, Ron. You, you don't. You know, but you know your your wife does though. Whoa! You talking about my wife's breast, man? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not not directly, man. I'm just saying that she can. You know, I mean, if, if I had her breast milk for like six months straight, man, I could get back whole again, man. Oh the f up! You don't talk about a man's wife or her breast milk. I just had a I just had a f baby, man. Are you serious? I'm just I'm just all I'm so trying. So you're asking to... for my wife's breast milk, man? Man, I'm just asking y'all to share it for six we months. We can't share no breast milk with you, man. You got the wrong one, man. The wrong one. So you said your name was what? My name's Foley, Foley man. Some... This is wrong, man. This is wrong. Okay. Wrong. No, no, we're just talking about six months of breast milk, man. Six months My of breast milk. My wife's breast milk. We ain't talking about just no breast milk. And I understand. My wife's breast milk, man. I understand that, man, but we're talking about you saving a life, man, a life. I ain't the one. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What if y'all would have had twins, man? Y'all would have been breastfeeding two babies. Just look what? at it as if we twins. What the f***? Man, I'm getting the f*** off this phone because I don't know who the f*** you are. You need to chill the f*** out, man. You need to go get on your knees, pray that your bones get healed or whatever the f You got the wrong f***. Number man, listen man. All I'm saying is I got one more thing I want to say, nah, look, and then man, I'm about to get off the phone, man. I just want to get off the phone, call Kendra, and find out why she gave you my number because that's how you got it. Can I say one more thing? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I say it? Say it, man. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Kendra and your wife Marilyn got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> Ooh, y'all are good, man. Whoa, man, my wife, man. Man, Kendra, boy. Did I get you, man? Yeah, y'all got me, man. Y'all got me. <laughs> All right. I got them, too. They done started something. Hey, one more thing. What's the baddest radio station in the land, man? Man, it is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Man, wow, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nephew Tommy, get your bones together. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO <laughs> with the Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, is 72-year-old actor Bill Murray thirsty for Khaleesi's milkshake? Hmm. In summer concert news, celebrity superfan sightings at Beyonce's tour, and Flava Flav is a huge fan of Taylor Swift. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Who is a fan? <laughs> Ta- Flava, Flava Flav of Taylor, Smith, uh, Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Plus, uh, we're going to get to this as well. DC Young Fly delivered a powerful message of faith and love at Jackie O's funeral. We'll talk about all of this at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. All right, this one's from Major in New Haven. Major writes, I've been 60, I'll be 60 soon, and I'm still living paycheck to paycheck because my wife has discovered online shopping. I took the credit cards from her, and she took the cookie away from me. How can we come to a reasonable compromise over money? Well, you're going to have to give some of them credit cards back so you can get some of the cookie back. Yeah. Mm. See, if you cut somebody off, do unto others, as you would have them do unto you. Mm-hmm. So if you cut her off, she done turned around and cut you off. Now, what you should have did was worked out some type of budgeting arrangement so you could have somewhat of a budget going on with your credit card. But now you're going to cut it all off, took all of them. Well, now guess what? Oh, we taking stuff now. I keep telling y'all how valuable that thing is. Way worth way more than credit cards, ain't it, dog? <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. So we gonna have to work. We gonna have to compromise. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you some for these credit cards. You give me some for that cookie. Wow. Now how we looking now? <laughs> That's what marriage is. It's compromise. Mm-hmm. Now yes, you won't have is. to find a better way to say that. Just say I would go at it like this and say, baby, look, I tripped. I should have came to you a little bit more respectful. Let me ask you something. Which one of these can you use, and how much do you want to play with a month? And just let me know what that number is, and then I'll just make it work for me. And then you have unlimited yeah. cookies. No, 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 no. Ain't no unlimited cookies. Ain't no unlimited cookies. Well, That's I not going to happen. I don't give a damn what you give them. Well, <laughs> a car, it. a house. Yeah. Me. I, know. I, done bought, I done bought enough stuff to get unlimited cookies, yeah. but that ain't how it works. You're an expert in that. <laughs> I don't feel like it. All right. Right. <laughs> Moving on to Trisha in West Philly. Trisha says, I overheard my husband talking to a lady that goes to our church, and he said that she told him confidentially uh, confidential info about our pastor. He said he cannot tell me because he promised not to. Is he lying? Should I talk to her about confiding in my man? Why would she tell your man some confidential information about the pastor? Yeah. Who is your man at the church? What's he doing? Deacon, elder, What's his role at the church? Yeah. yeah. Choir director. What is he uh, ministry is he over? Yeah. 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 Mm. He's a problem solving committee. What are you on? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have that in my church. <laughs> oh, what, what is he in charge of church complaints? <laughs> no, he not. Uh, <laughs> get that Come on, sure. Lana. And Shreveport writes, I let my mom use my car, and she backed into a pole. She has car insurance, but she told me that I need to cover it on my insurance, and she threatened to stop speaking to me if I file a claim against her insurance. How do I handle this? Well, I don't know, because I don't know your mama. (laughs) I think you do, based on this. (laughs) Yeah, your mama rough, though. Yeah. She a gangster. Need to put that on your insurance. I'm not messing up mine. My rates ain't finna go up. But your mother has a better chance of uh, holding her rate because uh, I don't know. I don't know. Hell, it's how much? See, first of all, you got to look at your deductible. How much is the damage that she backed into the pole? How hard did she hit it? Some of this stuff ain't worth reporting to the insurance company. Yeah. Sometimes you can go to huh. them uh, dent places and get them dents pulled out, especially at them bumpers. But y'all ain't got y'all got them new fiberglass cars now. You can probably crack. You got to replace that whole back quarter panel. Well, that's going to no. cost a lot. I mean. Well, well, okay, Shirley, it's her mama. What you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. Come hey, on, uh, mom. You, and, uh, we need about this better. Uh, your mama might think might not think your car worth it. <laughs> that might be it. Yeah. You know, she should have said that and not what she said. Well, but yeah, you got to you got to you got to look at the how, how much is the damage? 
before we start calling, see, what year is your car? <laughs> How much is the damage? <laughs> what is the deductible? It's a lot of math got to go into this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you risk you your need, mama not talking yeah, to you. <laughs> yeah, you need to go lot. do all that. You know, if your car is five years old, you might want to think about this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not fixing this 2004 kids now. Mean mama. We're not doing it. <laughs> we not mean mama. mama. <laughs> yeah, mama said that. Yeah. All right. So that's it. All right, moving on. Last one, Steve. Jasmine in the Bronx says, My boyfriend and I live together, and when he comes home from work, he doesn't greet me or talk to me for at least an hour. He said he needs to decompress and clear his mind. I thought that's what I'm here for. Am I missing something? Yes, you are missing something. A lot. Everybody needs some me time, ladies. And what your man does is probably a stressful job. He just want to come home. He need an hour just to unplug. You don't know what's going down there on that job with that but man. So he doesn't he even greet her? Hi. Give me a minute. You can't you walk in my house, you don't greet her? Hey, babe, uh, you know, hey, he can speak, but that's it. Hey, yeah. that's all uh, it. Let's stop you know, it. That's hey. it. He could speak to her kiss. No, no, we, uh, hey, we just said now. See, now you want to kiss. A minute. So you don't see now. What now is you wrong with that? Soon. No, because <laughs> then you don't know when to stop. Now you're going to want to talk. You know how we y'all know. is? Ooh. No, uh-uh. No, y'all uh-uh. don't know. Stop acting like y'all logical. Because you ain't. Uh-oh. You all want to talk. Stop that. You're not coming in my house not speaking to me, though. That's it's ridiculous. his house, too. Then that's I just ridiculous. sit in the driveway. I just sit well, in the driveway. Well, that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Speaking yeah. to me. I'm going to speak, a... but leave me alone until I get here. Let me, let me see that fine. attitude that's y'all rude. two got right there. You see that right there? That's, that's, that's why the man. And then see, it, it, y'all, that's every time he come in the house. That day. That day y'all just did. That day. That's what yeah. that man did. Whatever. That's, what that's the not part she left. No, no, no. No, no. See, right there. It ain't no. <laughs> no, no, it ain't. Ain't nobody doing that. She didn't over exaggerate it. She lying. The oh, lady in the lying. letter oh, is lying. Uh, Whatever. Oh, Hell uh, yeah. She's not lying. She's not lying. See what y'all That's two drama queens just did. Ain't nobody uh-uh, no don't drama. Talk, there ain't nobody a drama queen. That's just basic. <laughs> That's just basic. When you come in the house, you speak. Come on now. Hi, man. We said hi. Hey, baby. No, you didn't know. She said he doesn't greet me or talk to me. She hey, said baby, that when he day? comes up from work. What's up with that? Uh, how was your day? Uh, now we had a conversation. should be asking her that, too. Uh, how was your day, baby? don't give a damn right. how her day was. His was well, hell. He's selfish. Ooh, they don't need to be together. He just need an hour. Damn. He can have his hour <laughs> after he speaks. I've been out here hustling all day. I be dead. And, and so that, what? what does that you have, have to do with me? Tomorrow. You can speak. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to scoot away. You, you're going to say hello. <laughs> all right. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. DC Young Fly delivered a powerful... In the world of murderous cults, if Charles Manson is king, Cecilia Stein is queen. She conditioned them to be monsters. We are all so horrified by the idea that a mother would sully her daughter in this way. Why stab someone 65 times in the chest? Queen Havoc and Her Murder Cult is a new podcast that investigates the four-year killing spree carried out by a religious cult in South Africa. She was telling people the Bible says she must go and kill, but actually she was taking revenge. She actually copied American serial killers. A little bit of Charles Manson, you can see a bit of Sons of Sam. Cecilia's cult, called Electus Perdeus, killed 11 people over four years. Every time you think you understand what's happening, you realize that you're wrong. They let her go. That is what happened. Listen to Queen Havoc from the executive producers of Hell and Gone on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the Your Financial Maven podcast, where we need to change the way we think about money, our understanding of it, and the effects. I'm Samantha Mittman Besnoff, CPA, and I've spent over 25 years in the accounting field. The Your Financial Maven podcast will touch on all things related to money to help you feel financially empowered. You'll hear from guests all about how money is a tool and the importance of knowing your money. What is money? And I love what you had to say. Money's a tool. 
Yeah, just like younger years, of course, I always thought of it like, you know, as what can it allow me to do? Like, you know, right. money, if I want to travel. And just it was more focused about like doing fun things. And like, I never really thought early enough in life in terms of like, what can I use money for? Listen to the Your Financial Maven podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. message of faith and love at Jackie O's funeral. D.C. spoke Saturday at Jackie's celebration of life as family, friends, and loved ones gathered in Atlanta to remember Jackie. According to TMZ and other media outlets, D.C.'s message was clear and powerful. He's a God-fearing man and isn't questioning God's plan. Throughout his words, D.C. continued to tell Jackie how much he loved her and praised her as an incredible mother to their kids. Milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Remember that song? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, uh, all the boys and 72-year-old actor Bill Murray uh, is in her yard right now. The unlikely pair are dating, it says. A source said, quote, they are clearly hitting it off, okay? Uh, they are now meeting up in London. What? He's filming a ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 72. Mm-hmm. He too and, old uh, to be in her yard. He way too old to be in her yard. <laughs> He's filming a Ghostbusters sequel in England. Uh, Last weekend, they stayed at the same hotel. Murray watched Kelly's perform uh, from the stage Wings at South London's Mighty Hoopla Festival. Kelly's recently posted a picture of her in a swimsuit, and a social media user asked her if she cares address these Bill Murray allegations. She replied, LOL, no, babe, I wouldn't bother at all. So, Steve, I got to ask you, what's up with these older older guys, white guys, uh, having babies, you know, and now now dating. What's going on? I don't know, because I ain't an old white man. (laughs) 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 I ain't in none of the old white man meetings. I don't know what the hell they over there discussing, man. I was thinking about getting me some makeup on and going in there and see what they talking about, because I don't know, man. They they going through some things, man. I don't know what you don't mess around. You you know, you ain't even got all the ingredients for no damn milkshake. I don't even know why you mess with that girl. (laughs) But then, you know, she got one hit. Yeah, that's a big, big one. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. big one. That's, that's a big one. hit, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Twenty years ago, big. too. Twenty years ago. You don't think wow. that money gone? Oh yeah, oh, that might have been gone. <sighs> oh yeah. Yeah, you don't think that milkshake money gone? <laughs> Not that milkshake money it. damn near sour cream right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but Bill Murray, what is he doing? I don't know, man. I'm going to have to go talk to some of these old white men. I know a lot of them. Find out what's yeah. happening. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what's happening. You know, maybe we, maybe we should do a joint meeting. Old black men, old white men get together and discuss some things. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on. Give us Around a report. Time. <laughs> All right, well, finally in entertainment news, uh, there's been a lot of celebrity sightings attending the European dates of Beyonce's Renaissance Tour. Kelly Rowland has been there, Sir Paul McCartney, Stella McCartney, Ariana Grande, Kylie Jenner, and more. And not to be outdone, Flav of Flav was in full Swifty mode at Taylor Swift's Eras Tour stop in Detroit on Friday. He was posted up in the VIP section, showing off and swapping friendship bracelets with other fans. And throughout the show, Flavor Flav is just up there uh, singing along. He's dancing. I mean, you know, he he rocked a custom Taylor Swift t-shirt that read, I knew she was trouble. And of course, that references one of her biggest hits. So here's a question. Did he have a clock on, sir? Did he have a clock on? Yeah. (laughs) Flav would be playing with Flav if he didn't, Tommy. (laughs) Um, So who, who would you, you know, get in the VIP section to see right now? What artist you think? Besides Beyonce, of course, and Taylor Swift. Those are the obvious. Those are the biggest concerts going on in the country. My wife right going to that world. Woo. I think I'd be so out of place at a Taylor Swift VIP. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be there with the Swifties. <laughs> yeah, I'd be in there looking so out of place. Why it's like Flavor Flav. <laughs> Why is his old ass got this suit on? Where is he going? <laughs> Hey, Steve. <laughs> we didn't know. Uh... Right. Your ass wait for me. <laughs> I don't know, man. I ain't really. Okay, uh, well, sure. back to your seat. Hey. 
back in the day, which concert would you have stuck oh, back snuck in into the day. VIP? I just Ooh, man, I've had I've I've been in the VIP room with the OJs. I've been back there with Earth Wind. Mm-hmm. I was back there with Al Jarreau one time. Oh, the great Al Jarreau. Got wow. this back with Bill Duke. I was in the back, in the back with Sugarfoot and Ohio player. <laughs> Sugarfoot? All right. Me. Well, I've been Coming in the up. back with the dramatics with my brother. Oh. Coming up in 20 minutes after the bang. hour, we'll talk about a Home Depot hottie. Okay, keep that in mind right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. A Houston Home Depot hottie has gone viral. Her name is Ariana. She's a college student and employee at a Houston area Home Depot. She posted a selfie in the bathroom at work, and she joked in the caption about people saying she's too pretty to work at Home Depot. Many people on social media support her for getting a regular job and not showing off her body. One person commented that it was good to see that she didn't pursue a career on the OnlyFans site. Ariana then replied that she would never get an OnlyFans account. However, this young college student is getting some backlash for her comments for shading women working in the adult entertainment industry. What do you guys think? What do you think, well, Steve? First of You've all, seen why her? would they She's get beautiful. mad at the young girl for saying that she would never get a fans only page? Mm, oh, only yeah. fans. Uh-huh. Did, you know what? Everybody got their feelings hurt. Nah, nah, uh, damn, a porno people got their damn feelings hurt. So mm-hmm. damn what? <laughs> you done picked a profession that ain't ain't the greatest profession for a woman to choose. Even mm-hmm. you get the right to choose and be whatever you want to be. But you 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 showing your body damn near for little or nothing. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 if that's the trade-off you want to make, then fine. Don't get mad at the girl because she said she would never do a fans-only page. Oh, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm board. down to this 19% body fat. I get to 17% body fat. I'm getting me a damn fans-only page. I'm only, fans. <laughs> only fans. Only fans, <laughs> not fans yeah. only. Well, I'm getting an only fan. You give me one fan, two fans, you can fan me. <laughs> I'm going to get me a page if I get to 17% body that's fat. That's what it is. Well, I'm, your way, I'm baby. Me a, a, what they call it? Only, only fans. fans. Only fans. Only, yeah, only I'm going fans. to get yeah. that. But no, nah, man. I, and plus, the girl, she's young. She's in college. I, I, right. I, Shaq needs to keep his ass moving. He well, just well, he slid into her DMs. You well, know that, right? he just slide right on out. His old ass got kids that age. <laughs> So you just come your ass right on out them damn DMs and sit your ass down and get you a grown ass woman. She's a gorgeous yeah. girl. She is. She is. Well, that's very, cool. mm-hmm. very pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I and know you're that right. The sales up there. Surely the sales at that Home Depot is up 500 percent. Yes. She's doing outstanding. <laughs> yes. They are selling so much stuff. <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Yeah. She just had her orange apron on in the bathroom, took a selfie, and it went viral. She's that pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's good, so she, though. That's a message, working, though. Yeah. That's a message. There. All these girls on social media, we see they body, they mm-hmm. twerking, they doing all this. Ooh. This girl just posted herself at bathroom at work. A college and student. Now, yeah. Yes. Doing and her that thing. Was it. Yeah, mm-hmm. doing getting a regular job because mm-hmm. you can't win. Because if a girl, if she would have post her body, then people would have commented just like you said, Steve. Get a job, get a uh-huh. regular job. Then she gets a regular job, and then she says what she says. And then they yeah. say, "Well, you saying well, stuff yeah. again?" The yeah. hate is gonna come. But the it's porno come. people upset. No matter what you do, <laughs> they got a lot of damn nerve. <laughs> Well, they're saying she's shading in the adult Let them all, John. Let them all. <laughs> the protest. <Nick> <laughs> all right, guys. Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, we'll check Steve's voicemail right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it is time to check Steve's voicemail. If you would like to leave a message for Steve, call him 877-29-STEVE. 877-29-STEVE. You might just hear your call on the air, like this one from Lonnie Steve. Lonnie's from Michigan. He's married three times, but he needs your advice. Come on, Lonnie. Hey, Steve. My name is Lonnie. I just wanted to call in about it. You know, I've been married two times, Steve. All three of my wives are there. You know, they, they passed away. You know, not not to my joy, but just the ailments that they had. And now I'm in what, what they call that commission, to where I, 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 I can't deal with any more women because I'm afraid. Tell me what you think about that. Peace out, my brothers, and I love your show. 
Is it commission? Wow. Well, Lonnie, I don't, I don't, never been in commission before. I, I uh, did you real. mean remission? I don't I know what so. you mean. <laughs> did you mean submission? I don't really know, Lonnie. I'm to but I out. think what you need to do, Lonnie, is just go sit down some damn well. Cause <laughs> you know, man, when you ain't sure, Lonnie, just stop. See, your your problem is you want to keep going in forward motion. Sometimes you got to be still. You got to trust. You got to say a prayer. You got to wait on the answer. Now, I don't know what I heard you say, but it thought like you said one of them died or... Three. All, all, all three, three of, of his wives died. died. But it now, let me explain died. something, Lonnie. Don't nobody want you at this point. <laughs> I'm just going to be real with you because it seems like hooking up with you is leads to early premature death. He said he didn't so, do it, Steve. Yeah, well, I know what he said. He don't think he did. He don't look like yeah, it. Yeah, but all, everybody is dying. Now, it's time for you to sit your ass down and stop killing people. That's what you need to do. He said he didn't do it. I, well, why is they dead, though? All of them. Everybody married Lonnie died. Now, how that one and one is two. And the two, Lonnie, is always you. <laughs> you is the one of the ones in the equation of one plus one equals two. Two. Two people get together, one of them die. Who left? The other one is Lonnie. <laughs> now, Lonnie, not that ain't a good-ass good track Lonnie. record. No, it's if not If you tell good. a woman that you date, now I've been married three times and all of them have died. You will never be on a date long right after that statement. <laughs> you know how many people gonna get up, go to the powder room, and go get in their car? He's <laughs> not in commission right now. Huh? He's in commission. What He's not mean? in commission. <laughs> <laughs> He's in remission. <laughs> He's grieving. Okay. All right. Okay. We have he one need more. He a new mission. That's what he needs. Poor oh Lonnie. My gosh. All right. We have yeah, another one, Steve. Uh, <laughs> last week, uh, <laughs> poor Lonnie. Last week, we played a, a voicemail from a male caller from Philly, Steve, that said his wife doesn't want him yelling or disciplining their son. Now, we you have a caller. That call? remember, remember that? Yeah. 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 We have a caller who left a comment. Take a listen. Good morning. Uh, I just have one question. Steve Harvey was saying the one thing that a man knows how to do is be a man. I was just wondering if Steve Harvey could give us, the people, examples of what that is. And that is being a man. For you and your mind frame, Steve, for knowing what a man is and what, you know, you were just talking about disciplining the child and let that man discipline the child. Because one thing, men are not good at a lot of things, but one thing they are good at is being a man. So I just want to know, what are the things that you know that you are a good man? Manhood is simple. We only have a few basic rules. We protect, we profess, and we provide. That is the basic aura of manhood. Professing his love for you, protecting you, and providing for you. The number one rule of manhood is just do what you say you're going to do. If a man does everything he says he's going to do, he garners the respect of his children. He gets the respect of his co-workers. He gets the respect of all his friends. He gets the respect of the woman he's dating. He gets everybody's respect. Those are the three things. Protection, provision, and providing. Pro mm -hmm. pro professing, protecting, and providing. And do what you say you're going to do. That's manhood check. all day. Check. Mm. Check, check. That's it. That is. And, all right. real boxes, simple. Baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Steve. Thank you. Uh, coming up next, today's prank phone call from the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is body oils, gels, lotions, and potions. Mm. Mm. We'll get into that, find out what that's all about, because I have no clue right now. Uh, <laughs> that's coming up a little later. Right now, it is time for the nephew in today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nap? You know, everybody has mm -hmm. a work spot, a work wife or work husband, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, normally work wives and work husbands, they go out and have lunch together. You I'm know, and it just disturbs me while we at lunch. When I'm at lunch with my work wife, uh, hear her husband come calling every time we out to, out to lunch. Hear he come calling. Just disturbed. What do, what do you want? Why are you calling every lunch? What is it? 
So you mad Let when Tosh calls? Let me get this straight, calls? yeah. Because I'm your work wife. You get mad when Tosh calls. Yeah, what do he want? <laughs> ain't, you at, ain't you at Wells Fargo? Do what you got to do. What did you do? What, did you, what do you want? Count them people money. What did you want? What are you calling for? Get these people these home loans and move on. <laughs> yes. So this is work lunch. I think that's I the title of it. That's the title of it. Work lunch. Lunchtime date. I'm sorry. Lunchtime date. There he is. Lunchtime date. Let's go, cat dog. Let's cut, let's hurry up. Oh, Tosh, call now. Come on. <laughs> I want a divorce. <laughs> Hello. Hey, I'm trying to speak to uh, I'm trying to speak to Alan. Yeah, this is Alan. Who's this? Hey, Alan. Yo, this is Derek, man. Check this out, bro. Uh, you you are Rachel's uh, Rachel's husband, right? Yeah, yeah, that's my baby. What's up? Something wrong? No, 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 no. I work. This like I said, this is Derek, man. I work with your wife, Rachel. Right, you you so you a supervisor or something? I mean, you just this about work or something? I mean, she doing a good job and everything. She ain't better. No, 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 everything's straight, man. Ain't nothing wrong with the job. Everything's cool with the job. This this right here, man, is like it, what I know this man. And it, you know, it just seems like every single day, you know, while she's on her lunch break, uh-huh. it seems like you know you would call and 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 uh, and then block up the whole hour of her lunch break, and actually, you know, just be real, man, I'm just trying to come correct with you, it just seemed like you just cut in on all the time that I have, that I have with her, well, you know what well, I'm saying? Well, well, whoa, 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 hold, hold up, homie, hold up, hold up, bro, wait, you, what the f*** are you doing at lunch with my lady, son? No, no, like I say, you know, we just, we just spending time, you know, doing lunchtime, but it just seems so rude, you know, that but rude, rude, time, f- rude, you, you, okay, first of all, that's my lady, okay, I can call her whenever the f- I feel like calling her. That's I pay for that phone bill. I bought that iPhone five. I could get the, call whatever, please. All right. Secondly, you ain't got no business being with a married woman alone at lunch. This ain't no date. Y'all supposed to be at work. No, no we are at work. We, call, we like I say, we co-workers. You know, but it, it, it seems like half the whole time I'm sitting in front of her. You know, we supposed to be having lunch together, and, and she talking to you the whole time. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Okay, what, what, what's your name again, bro? My name's Derek. Derek, Derek. All right, Derek. You work at the same building now? Okay, you you at work right now, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm here at the job. I mean, y'all working the same flow? Cause I'm finna come see you. You King's about to jump off. Way, way <laughs> different for you. Straight up. Okay, so no, let, let me ask you something, man. What is the big deal? I, I'm just trying to. Okay, you act like you don't see her. You act like you don't see her when she get home. You know, so so well, why is it so important that you waste a whole hour of lunch time holding her? It ain't wasting. I ain't wasting my. I'm talking to my lady. Okay, you understand that? Why don't you go out there and get? And then you ain't got to worry about sitting up in front of my lady. That's my wife. I walk down the aisle with that. We got kids. We got a house. We take care of this. He helped me hold it down in this. You, you, you ain't. You know, it's like you. You don't ever want to come in and do. But they got. I've always want to come in and somebody else wife and. Why don't you do this? Take 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 this advice and see what it works how it works for you. Go to the church, library, grocery store, wherever the find your at, and you get you a chick. You date her for a minute. You court her for a minute. You romance her for a minute. That's what real men do. You know what I'm saying? That's what I did. That's how I got my my Rachel. That's the that's my heart. You trying to sit up there in front of lunch with her every day for the past year? <laughs> I tell you what, bro. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But soon, soon you gonna see me. Me and you gonna have none of this phone conversation. This gonna be a face to face. Hey, hey you. dude, dude, all, all of, hey, man, what? I ain't trying to come between y'all at all. No, all you know, in that Okay, like I'm saying, I'm not trying to come between y'all. I'm just saying it's every day you call it, man. What do you want? That's Why is supposed to talk to every god day? That's what a real do. You don't know about that because you, you ain't no real All you know about is trying to holler at some street. You don't know what it is to put in work like a real man do. To actually hold down a home, pay the bills, everything, the family, the kids, and <laughs> fixing the <laughs> yards and fences, and <laughs> you don't know nothing about that. All you know about is being a roach. <laughs> Wife can't even go to <laughs> work without <laughs> like you <laughs> trying to step to her and <laughs> don't make no god <laughs> sense. But that's okay. Like <laughs> I promise you, I'm gonna be there. You are gonna see me, and I'm gonna see you. You know, I tell you what, <laughs> this is how this <laughs> gonna go. It may not be tonight, but it's definitely not gonna go past tomorrow. Between now and then, you gonna see me, and I'm gonna see you, and I can't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Say, say, what, you say? What'd, you, what'd you say? Heard me. It's gonna be, uh, I will come see your by tomorrow, son. Me and you, Derek. That's your name, right, Derek? My, my, name, my, my name is Derek. Yes. I'm gonna 
You won't always want to be both smiley face in my wife's face. I'm going to deal with Rachel when I see her. She can please believe that. Please believe that. Talk to her about her little friend at lunch and like that. How how get my number anyway, man? So I got your number out of Rachel's phone, but that's besides the point, man. What the f*** about where it's from, my Y'all ain't that f***ing cool. I don't think, I, I ain't never heard of no Darius before today, and all of a sudden you calling me talking about you was at lunch every day with my wife and You no, my dog. Ooh. No, it's, a, no, it's a friendly lunch date is what it is. Friendly, but friendly, friendly, I know, I know about you. how you is do friendly. I know about all that You ain't fooling me, I know like you who prey on married women all the time because they like you. But that like I said, it's going to change. I promise you. Okay, Doug, here's, here's what you don't know. What you don't know is, is Tommy, Tommy be pushing up on her more than me. Who the f***? Tommy, Tommy, who the f***? Who the f***? Tommy, m***. Tommy is always pushing up on her. What? Tommy the one you need to be worried about. Who the f***? You have Tommy. Who the, who the f***? Tommy any f***? Dog, dog, dog. Nephew Tommy, man. Check this out. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife, Rachel, got me to prank phone call you. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe y'all did this to <laughs> me, man. Oh, uh, man. I was going to come down and f*** for me. You all right, man? Man, I am now. <laughs> I was going to... Ooh, well, you don't, I was going to come burn that building down. You don't even know. <laughs> man, all right, Pete, Pete, Tommy, this, this is my prediction. Somebody going to f*** you up. For real. <laughs> y'all, you just you play too much, man. Y'all tripping. Uh, hey, man, check it out. You got to tell me this, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Only the Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that is. All you work spouses out there, y'all know how it go. I know. I know. You're mad because you're at work with someone else's wife and their uh-huh. husband keeps calling. Uh, okay, what, what do we want, sure Shannon? He finna straight. see her when she get home. He gonna see her when she get there. <laughs> so let me right. you, you outrank, you outrank what are you time. What trying to say? You, you when we at home. work, yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, it's going down this Sunday, this Sunday, Father's Day night. You don't want to miss it in New Jersey and everybody around the way. It's been a long time since the nephew been up in the New Jersey, New York area, and it's going down at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. It's Earthquake Father's Day comedy show. Donnell Rollins, Tony Roberts, Vanessa Fraction, and yours truly, Nephew Tommy, in the building Sunday night at the New Jersey Pack. You do not want to miss it. Tickets are on sale right now. Did you hear what I said? I said red now. And I want to throw this in there. July 22nd, it's my fraternity, Calpa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, 86 Conclave, Tampa, Florida. I am hosting the Kappa Alpha Psi 86 Conclave, Conclave Family Outing on the Riverwalk. You don't want to miss it. If you in Tampa, you want to come hang out with the noobs, baby. We are in the city. Get your tickets. That's right. <laughs> All right, Family nephew, outing. thank you. Thank you, thank you. Coming up next, strawberry letters, subject body oils, gels, lotions, and potions. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In the world of murderous cults, if Charles Manson is king, Cecilia Stein is queen. She conditioned them to be monsters. We are all so horrified by the idea that a mother would sully her daughter in this way. Why stab someone 65 times in the chest? Queen Havoc and Her Murder Cult is a new podcast that investigates the four-year killing spree carried out by a religious cult in South Africa. She was telling people the Bible says she must go and kill, but actually she was taking revenge. She actually copied American serial killers. A little bit of Charles Manson, you can see a bit of Sons of Sam. Cecilia's cult, called Electus Perdeus, killed 11 people over four years. Every time you think you understand what's happening, you realize that you're wrong. They let her go. That is what happened. Listen to Queen Havoc from the executive producers of Hell and Gone on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the Your Financial Maven podcast, where we need to change the way we think about money, our understanding of it, and the effects. I'm Samantha Mittman Besnoff, CPA, and I've spent over 25 years in the accounting field. The Your Financial Maven podcast will touch on all things related to money to help you feel financially empowered. You'll hear from guests all about how money is a tool and the importance of knowing your money. 
what is money? And I love what you had to say. Money's a tool. Yeah, just like younger years, of course, I always thought of it like, you know, as what can it allow me to do? Like, you know, right. money, if I want to travel and just it was more focused about like doing fun things. And like, I never really thought early enough in life in terms of like, what can I use money for? Listen to the Your Financial Maven podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Well, Kevin Hart is taking over Resorts World Las Vegas for Heartbeat Weekend, July 6th through the 9th for four days of comedy and music with live performances from Kevin Hart, J. Cole, Jack Harlow, Ludacris, and more. And you're going to love this. We're giving away a pair of tickets to see Kevin live at Resorts World Theater on July 7th, including round-trip coach airfare and two nights hotel accommodations at Resorts World Las Vegas. You can enter now and get rules at steveharveyfm.com. It is sponsored by AEG Presents. That's steveharveyfm.com for all the info. That sounds yeah. like fun. <laughs> we do it big. We mm-hmm. do it We do. Kevin. Yes. I want to go. I mean, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right, it is time now, guys, for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. So it right could on. be yours. Let's buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, body oils, gels, lotions, and potions. All right, dear Stephen Shirley, I'm 48 years old and divorced. I'm seeing an old friend from work that is also divorced. He has been dating a lot longer than I have, so it started out as him hanging out with me, so I was not lonely. I needed to start out by saying that this man used to light up the office with cologne when he walked in. It's like he bathed in it every morning and it completed Uh, It competed with the extra fabric softener smell in his clothes. I have sensitive sinus issues, so he'd make me sneeze whenever I got close to him. Nothing's changed, really, except he now uses a lot of body oils and he continues, he combines the oils for different purposes. The other night, we went to an outdoor concert and he made up a natural bug repellent that made people and bugs want to run from him. Uh, when it comes to making love, he can't get started without giving me a sensual massage with oils he concocted. I have asked him to stick with lavender, but he sneaks other oils in on me. Getting ready to go out with him takes forever because his body oils, because of his body oils, his gels, his lotions and potions. He also loves to rub crystals and burn sage when something doesn't go his way. I know this is all new age stuff, but I believe in deodorant and not oils. When the oils wear off and he starts sweating or exerting too much energy, he needs a real deodorant, not the gel stuff he puts under his arm. Having said all of that, I do care for this man and we have history. My husband was a big country bumpkin who worked hard and took care of me. He showered with manly soap and did yard work. But my boyfriend is more into self-care than me. Should I kick him to the curb because he's greasy and smelly or do do I ask him to tone it down a bit? A good man is so hard to find. Well, I, I, you know, to this, to you, I just say this cleanliness and smelling good. Those are deal breakers. Th- those really are deal breakers. I mean, what else is there? You got to be able to stand this person, to, to, to be in the same room with this person, to be around this person, and of course, be intimate with this person. I mean, if he stinks, there's no chance of that, right? A good man is hard to find, but that's no excuse to settle for some funky smelling man. It's just not. You got to talk to him. You got to tell him about his odor. You got to tell him how it makes you sneeze, all of that stuff. I mean, ask him to lighten up. Up, to tone it down. You've asked him that. He didn't do it. He's always sneaking some kind of oil in it, in on you. I mean, maybe he can use one oil at a time uh, and, and tell him the oils he used 
uses, you don't like the way they smell. You you got to tell him this is the only way he can be with you. I mean, maybe he'll be embarrassed if you tell him this stuff. Maybe he'll be mad at you. But at least if he really cares, maybe he'll stop using so many of these stinky oils. Uh, then you can give him a care package, you know, with some nice smelling soaps in it, you know, and, and of course, some deodorant and some, some cologne. If he refuses, I, th- I just think he'll be over there stinking by himself. I mean, this is important. Cleanliness, smelling good. All of that. Steve? Well, let's get started. This is a letter about a crazy person. <laughs> That's what this is right here. You are dating a damn lunatic. I don't know how else you see this. I know how you see it differently. Because you're 48 years old and divorced. And you just start seeing this old friend from work that's also divorced. Oh, wonder why he got divorced. He's been dating a lot longer than I have, so it started out as him just hanging out with me, so I wasn't alone. Okay? So here we go with this old friend stuff again. I done told y'all about this friend. Man. He an old friend of yours from work. Now, now y'all sleeping together. Now, you got to put all this Crisco on and everything. He likes the smell of fresh bacon. Now he just rubbing your ass down in bacon grease off the stove. He got off that Maxwell coffee can. Now, your nutty ass and got involved with this man. Now, you said you want to start off by saying that he used to light up the office with cologne when he walked in. It's like he bathed in it every morning, and it competed with the extra fabric softness smell in his clothing. What? What? Then you said, I have sensitive sinus issues, so he'd make me sneeze whenever I got close to him. What are you seeing him for? He is offensive. Then you say, nothing's changed. Really? He's still walking in the office lighting it up. You still sneezing. He's still bathing in all these oils. And nothing's changed, really, except now he uses a lot of body oils that he can combines the oils for different purposes. The other night we went to an outdoor concert. He made up a natural bug repellent that made people and bug. What did he put on? What did he put on him that's got everybody running at the park? Hang on, Steve. Hang on. We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's you ain't supposed to spray raid on yourself. <laughs> Body oils, gels, lotions, and potions. We'll get back into it right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, body oils, gels, lotions, and potions. This 48-year-old woman who's divorced started seeing an old friend from work. I have told y'all about these friends. They cannot stay there long, If not if you're there attracted to you. You cannot be friends with the person you're attracted to. It doesn't work for men. And if you're an attractive woman and you look good to this man for whatever the reason, whoever you are, all women are attractive to somebody, then that man wants to sleep with you. Oh, why y'all can't understand this? Damn. <laughs> Quit looking in the Zoom, Monica, like you can't believe me. Yes, if the man is in your face and he's attracted to you, he wants to be your friend so he can try to sleep with you. What y'all missing about this? Just go back in your life and think of all the men that was friendly to you and the moment they thought they had a chance. Ain't they asked you for some? Wow. Every last one. All your friends then joked about it. I come by there and holler. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it sorry, wasn't. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I bet I know. I bet I bet I know. I wish I was over there. <laughs> Girl, you crazy. You want to go see this movie? <laughs> so now this man, you started seeing this man, but he used to come in the uh, office with cologne when he walked in. And like he bathed in it and he combined it with his fabric softener. And you got a sensitive sinus issue, so he made you sneeze whenever you got close. Why are you dating this man? Nothing's changed, really, except now he uses a lot of body oils and he combines the oils for different purposes. Other night, y'all went to an outdoor concert. He made up a natural bug repellent that made people and bugs want to run from him. What did he put on? (laughs) He done sprayed Raid on his ass. And then came back and topped it off with some Halston. <laughs> Not Halston. Yeah. <laughs> Halston. Thought he was good and put a little bit of polo on it. Mm. 
you know, because the polo, the emblem on the polo bottle, the green bottle with the gold cap, got a horse on it. Mm, and right. that ought to keep the bugs off a horse. So he put that on, too. When it comes to making love, he can't get started without giving me a sensual massage with all he concocted. Now, he rub it. He like bacon. So now he done went down there in the kitchen uh-huh. and got a scooped up a hand of that bacon oil off that coffee can on the stove. Now, yeah. he up there rubbing your ass down with bacon grease. But you like lavender, so he throw a little bit of lavender on with it. Now you feeling hot and tingly. You smell like hot, sweet meat. <laughs> I've asked wow. him to stick with lavender, but he sneaks other oils in on me. What's wrong with this fool you date? Getting ready to go out here would take forever because of the body oils, gels, potions, and lotions. He also loves to rub crystals and burn sage when something don't go his way. Mm. No, she breaks so out. you got a man in here that's burning sage mm-hmm. and holding crystals when something don't go his way. Y'all gonna mess around set y'all house on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I see that right now. Y'all gonna lose all y'all homeowners insurance right here. You up here with this little strong ass. He smell like that whole he smell like that whole tray that be on the streets in New York and brothers up there be selling them all. Oh yeah. So yep. you get caught up at that stand sometime because some gonna smell good to you. But if you buy more than three, you're finna stink. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> if you buy more than three of them little vials of oil, you finna stink. Don't let nobody tell you that's oud wood. That ain't what that is. <laughs> now look. I know this is all new age stuff, but I believe in deodorant and not oil. See, he putting oil under his arm. Oil is not a funk deterrent. It is like putting a mask on an ugly person. You ever been to a Halloween party and an ugly person put a mask on, and for some reason he got to take his mask off so he can sip a drink? Uh-huh. And he looked the same with the mask on <laughs> or off. I mean, it's just Halloween for his ass all the time. That's what you're dealing with here. Having said all that, I do care for this man, and we have history. What history? Y'all just been friends. That He's been a friend of yours. He's wanted to sleep with you the whole time. That ain't history. Mm. But y'all history ain't been that good, though. He make love to you, spraying all this stuff on you. You and that, you got deep wood bug repelling on. Y'all finna make love. And then he coming out with that bacon grease. Now you got little sandwich spread on you. He and that got mayonnaise. He working with your ass with mayonnaise on and all this here. Ew. And you just in here, you just a damn sandwich. <laughs> now, I, now, my husband was a big country bumpkin. Who worked hard, took care of me. He showered with manly soap and did yard work. Yeah. But oh, no. But my boyfriend is more into self-care than me. Should I kick him to the curb because he's greasy and smelly? Or do I ask him to tone it? A good man is so hard to find. What is good about this man? You have not said one good thing about this man. I'm trying to figure out you just want somebody. So I just go and stay with his big stink ass. <laughs> that's, that's what he is. He's a Hey, post your comments on, on today's you know what you Strawberry today. Letter <laughs> at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram you and Facebook. Tomorrow he's going to wear coconut with axle grease. Ooh, and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Download it today. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, we got Sports Talk with Junior right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What? Say it. Well, let me say congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. Can't believe it. <laughs> Can't be- Been having this Miami Heat on all night. Yeah, Can't you got a Miami what? Heat hat on right now. Right now. Slap uh, in it. Because I'm uh, disappointed. Can't believe it. But congratulations uh, to the Denver Nuggets. But I had this hat on all night. Can't believe it. Yeah, they the world champs. The Denver yeah, World champs. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it. Okay. I've had this hat on. I haven't seen a more boring <laughs> finals, finals. <laughs> yeah. a, 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 in years, man. I haven't seen a more boring finals yeah. in years, man. I just haven't seen it like this. It wasn't good, Junior. That's what my husband you know, said. He said, woo, this game boring. <laughs>
It was man, a- I mean, ain't no runs, ain't nobody trying. You know, Denver just had them out. They were just, they were undersized. They were undersized. Yeah. My Miami need length and some have. more athleticism because all they got is them damn three-point shooters. The only athlete on that team is Jimmy Butler. And That's the new cats think, standing out there. How you think Jimmy feel this morning? Do you think he want to get rid of everybody he playing with? Jimmy tired, man. He tired. Three final appearances in four years. This man ain't won one. You don't think he tired? Well, I mean, you know. You, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, but he can't it do it all. He can't do it by himself. No, it's it wasn't a like, sport. It ain't, you know. It wasn't like LeBron it was. went to the well a few times before he got it, you know. Uh, man. Jordan went to the well a bunch of times so he got it. A lot of times. You got to go, man. You know, yeah. I don't feel sorry for him. I just, it, he it got all like, his money, Junior. He got all I, his I bet he got all his money, Unc. But I had this hat on all night. I can't believe Junior, it. Junior, don't nobody give a damn about you and your hat. <laughs> now, this is about the damn Denver Nuggets. The Heat lost. What game was you watching? The the one where they lost, Unc, and I had it on because I was believing. Hey, dog, mm. that hat ain't got nothing to do with the outcome. You could, you know how many people had on Miami jerseys last night? <laughs> they had on the heat. <laughs> oh, they done bought all socks, that. Socks, everything. So, me, me and DJ Kelly is upset this morning. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly needs Kelly. to sit down, too. Dog, that, that, that ain't y'all's team. Major key alert, DJ Khaled. <laughs> I can't another believe one. It. I'm sorry. Yes, another one. We lost another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did. We lost another one. Y'all That's didn't believe saying. in Denver. God did. <laughs> <laughs> Just use all of his stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you even know that. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you get the pop culture information I have, Drew. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all ain't believe in Denver. God did. (laughs) Thank you, Junior. Congratulations to the Denver Nuggets. We'll be back with some questions to our fathers on the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In the world of murderous cults, if Charles Manson is king, Cecilia Stein is queen. She conditioned them to be monsters. We are all so horrified by the idea that a mother would sully her daughter in this way. Why stab someone 65 times in the chest? Queen Havoc and Her Murder Cult is a new podcast that investigates the four-year killing spree carried out by a religious cult in South Africa. She was telling people the Bible says she must go and kill, but actually she was taking revenge. She actually copied American serial killers. A little bit of Charles Manson, you can see a bit of Sons of Sam. Cecilia's cult, called Electus Perdeus, killed 11 people over four years. Every time you think you understand what's happening, you realize that you're wrong. They let her go. That is what happened. Listen to Queen Havoc from the executive producers of Hell and Gone on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the Your Financial Maven podcast, where we need to change the way we think about money, our understanding of it, and the effects. I'm Samantha Mittman Besnoff, CPA, and I've spent over 25 years in the accounting field. The Your Financial Maven podcast will touch on all things related to money to help you feel financially empowered. You'll hear from guests all about how money is a tool and the importance of knowing your money. What is money? And I love what you had to say. Money's a tool. Yeah, just like younger years, of course, I always thought of it like, you know, as what can it allow me to do? Like, you know, right. money if I want to travel and just it was more focused about like doing fun things. And like, I never really thought early enough in life in terms of like, what can I use money for? Listen to the Your Financial Maven podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Father's Day is this Sunday, guys. Uh, Steve and Tommy, you guys are... <laughs> What's that what little dry saying? yay for? What about it? What Didn't about it? What you say, Steve? Here, what? Didn't have what? a dry ass day. What? What? Go ahead. Tell us. Well, you guys are wonderful fathers, Steve, yeah, Tommy. Yeah, we is. Junior, you're a great father figure. You've always been to your nephews. You're a stepfather mm-hmm. now as you're a newlywed. So here's some questions for you guys, the fathers on the show, Okay. 
What chore, what job did your dad make you do all of the time? What'd you have to do? Cut the yard. Oh, God, I had a lot of... I cut the yard. Uh, I washed wash my, wash my mama's car. Yeah. I take the trash out. You better not, you better not forget to take the damn trash out. I didn't, I didn't caught the garbage man four blocks down with the garbage can. <laughs> you running with I have, I have not. I have ran with that. I can't come back without, with that trash still in that can. No, oh, I didn't let wow. it off. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Steve? I have tarred the damn driveway. <laughs> tarred the driveway? I was a, I wasn't a son. Saying, I was a damn wait a construction minute. worker. Did you say, <laughs> did you say <laughs> fix the garage? You don't. Hell yeah, yeah, man. I don't know why he even called me a son, because I wasn't nothing but a damn label. <laughs> I was a damn illegal. I was up there working like an illegal. I was back there planting gardens. I was farming. Well, you got paid, right? You got allowance. And allowance for doing all of that, right? Uh-uh. <clears throat> What? Uh-uh. No. Oh, you yeah. didn't get allowances for your chores? Yeah. No. Paper you did route. around the house? I had a paper route. I, I had a pop bottle. Yeah. Allowance. Give me yeah. money. Yeah. What? Well, you better earn these groceries to... I'm in here buying. Your allowance was groceries. <laughs> yeah. Food. Man, Dinner. You must, breakfast. Y'all must think. <laughs> allowance for doing what you're supposed to do? Oh, Tar no, no, the no, driveway? No. Okay. All right. We're going to move on. What, what was your dad's favorite food and what's your favorite food what was your dad's favorite food oh, oh my god steak yeah. and potatoes yeah. steak and potatoes steak no and potatoes. no 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 we used to go to this barbecue place called burns barbecue and it's called regulars it's called uh-huh. regulars and regulars was the ends that they cut off the barbecue that they really didn't use it's called tip. Uh-huh. it was crazy Okay. Well, in here, down in Texas, they call it regulars. And, I, and my daddy would go and get a bag of regulars. i like, why we don't never get, like, the real part of the ribs? Why is we eating the regulars? You know what I mean? I'd be like, why we, can we afford the ribs? And we know we get the real, we get the regulars, and it'd be the, the scrap part of it. Uh-huh. And if we wasn't eating that, then we was eating summer sausages and hog head cheese. And I was like, I don't, this hog head thing is not good. I don't like it. Boy, that's good. Put that with them crackers, yeah. boy, and eat that. We're going to work. <laughs> um, Steve. My daddy was a real specialist for show, but mm-hmm. I don't know what it was. His love for pinto beans was beyond me. Pinto beans, really? He would make a pot of pinto beans and a skillet of cornbread and serve it like this was high-end ass delicacy eating. <laughs> and would sit down with them mm-hmm. chopped onions and some chow chow. Uh-huh. Like we like and that was the meal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that was the meal. And and if you had a ham hock yep. in there, that was Ooh. his, so you can quit looking at it. Uh, oh, y'all can have any of the ham hot? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I try to get in there and get a little piece of something, like be a shred in there. Uh-huh. But I don't know his love for uh, pinto beans with that brown lick on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. with cornbread. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Not, not big dog. You know what I can't eat to this day because of my daddy? Them damn sardines, man. I can't, I can't, sardines I can't pass crackers. down that aisle right there. Mm-hmm. Them damn I can't eat, I can't eat no damn Vienna sausage. <laughs> nah. I what, can't what? eat no Vienna sausage, Vienna sausage. no Spam, <laughs> no stuff. Them two things will never, ever happen. They'll never enter my body again in life. Spam. And I, I knew that when I was nine. I said, Lord, if you let me survive this. I promise you, when I get grown, ain't gonna be no more damn Vienna sausage or spam. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. So see, that wasn't so bad. Father's that Day is this. That was Daddy Talk. Daddy yeah. Talk. I like that. <laughs> Man. All right. Not coming now. up, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, here we are. You're 19% body fat now. And uh, looking good. And uh, tell the people how you got here. You have a new product out. It's at Walmart well, right now. It's, it's Elevate, Elevate You, man. You. For the first time yesterday, mm-hmm. I saw a TV commercial. Oh, yeah. I oh, my God. Commercial. On television. And I yeah. thought something was playing on my phone. And I looked up and I saw the Elevate You commercial. It is mm-hmm. in Walmart now. It is available in stick packs 
it is it's slowly getting on the shelves. All the Walmarts I found out don't have them yet, but a lot of them do. But you could go in there. They got the, all of the flavors are in stick packs. You could take it with you now. It's easy access. You don't have to scoop anymore. That's exclusively at Walmart. And I've got three gummies in Walmart now. One for digestion, one for your immunity, and the other one for your metabolism. So whatever you need, Elevate You has it there. It's got me tracking with energy where I'm able to work out more and, and do my workouts, get them done. I'm sleeping better. My digestion is good. And it's all about Elevate You exclusively at Walmart right now, even though you can still go online to ElevateU.com. But I want you all to know that you can walk into Walmart. And in August, they will have full stand-up cutouts of your boy. Go take a picture next to your boy at the Walmart. Holler at your boy. <laughs> ElevateYou.com. All right, Steve. Coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather marry a very rich person who you do not love or would you rather marry a poor person who you love a whole lot? Really in love, deeply. I'm going to say my wife too, listening, too. and I can't say nothing. Now. I Speak say, up, Junior. You're talking low. I said my wife listening. I can't <laughs> really say nothing. I have to be poor if this is going to be the question. When she hear this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Alrighty. All right. I would choose B anyway. That lady, that, that, that other person is going to get on my damn nerve. I don't yeah. like them. Yeah. Uh-uh. Married to a But they're very life. rich, though. I don't give a damn. I don't care. That's, okay. that's going to drive me crazy. A billionaire? No, I'm going to take Well, now, now you're talking a little something different. Nah, see, you talking <laughs> We said a very rich person. <laughs> a well, billionaire. on your perspective. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> listen to this. Listen, listen to the listen very to the rich person. See, to him, that ain't much, person. but to us, yeah. that's quite that's a bit. quite a bit. <laughs> Okay, so you guys would marry the poor person who you don't yeah, love. I, I mean, the, the poor person who you love a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm more the okay. poor person and we go build us a life. I'm not. Finished. That's very yeah. noble. I like no, that guy. Love is rich. Love like is rich. That. I like that answer. All right, would you rather fly first class or would you rather stay at a luxury hotel? You can only do one. You can only well, do one. Well, what is I'm going to do when I get off uh-huh. first class? Where in the hell is I'm staying? Flying first class or you stand at the luxury hotel? What well, we I'm do staying oh. at the luxury hotel. Me, yeah, mm-hmm. the luxury hotel. Yeah, yeah. Because that yeah. flight only a few hours. You got to spend the night yeah. in this ragged yeah. ass room. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, that's the last thing I need to do is walk out on my balcony and there go my car. <laughs> that's the last thing I need to do in my life right now. What was that hotel where you could open up the refrigerator while lying in bed with your big toe or something? You were telling us. <laughs> yeah, the night's in. <laughs> now remember that room Rashawn put us in in Birmingham. Uh oh, Boy, yeah. With them ghosts yeah. in it, and it, and it didn't have a closet. It had a it had a, a hanging bar mm, by your yes, bed. I, I ain't that. never seen nothing like that. I could just stay in the bed, flush the toilet, turn on the TV, <laughs> and change clothes and wash up all at the same. I ain't had to get out the bed. All right. Would you rather sleep with your cousin? Let me explain something to you. If you can lay in your bed and pee in that toilet, (laughs) it's too damn close. You need to know. It's It's a little. It's a tiny room. All right. Would you rather sleep with your cousin or would you rather sleep with an unquestionably ugly date? I'm I'm going to sleep with this. I'm going to go on and sleep Mm -hmm. with this unquestionably ugly uh, date because of I don't have no fine ass cousins. <laughs> yeah, that's my problem, Uncle. Uh, you ain't seen my cousin. You just assumed they was cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up in 49 oh, minutes. My cousins the past they prime. <laughs> Coming up in 49 minutes after the hour, we'll have the last break of the day. And of course, some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, guys, our last break of the day on this Tuesday. It's been a good day. Oh, absolutely. very good day. Yeah, mm-hmm. very good day. Mm-hmm. We've had a Less. good time Less today. Day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks to everyone. Hey, guys, listening. you know what? Uh, I want to talk about this in my closing remarks today because uh, the camp starts tomorrow. My, uh, it's tomorrow. I uh, hope we get a lot done this year. Uh, thank you all for volunteering. Thank you for all the speakers that's coming. Talk to God today. He'd love to hear from you. For all 
Hall's Steve Harvey contest. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 